Thank you, Kristen, and thank you for, uh, for your patience. Bob Katzman will be speaking next. Um, uh, Robert Katzman uh, owned and operated Bob's newsstands in five locations in Chicago, beginning when he was 15. It includes the city's most visible, famous, and now gone wooden newsstand at Randolph in Michigan, which lasted for 100 years. Um, he's published five nonfiction books about Chicago, his life, and his times. He's owned two bookstores, literary and foreign language, a periodical distribution company, and a kosher deli, the, Dil the Deli Dali, when he was 19 in 1969. His current business, the Magazine Museum, is in Skokie on Oakland Street off of Skokie Boulevard after being in Morton Grove for 20 years. Um, I've been to his, his store. It's quite a remarkable place. There are dozens and dozens of them, all green pieces, among other things, in the store. Uh, there are just four back issue magazine stores left in the USA. Chicago has one of them, and it's owned by Bob Katzman. Just talk to you. I hate microphones. Uh, my grandfather left Megalev, Belarus in 18. He was born in 1882 and he went to Poland and became a carpenter. Yeah, Better? Yes. All right. I'll say it in trial. My grandfather Jacob was born in Belarus. He became a carpenter escaped to Poland and came to America in 1901. My father told me that he used to come home from uni union meetings in Chicago, bloody. He was a socialist, and we were a union family. When I opened that newsstand, after I left home at 14, I met a man who was 69 years old with one arm and one leg. <coughs> he had run that newsstand in 1912 same corner I was in in 1965. He tried to get out of Chicago by running for a freight train and slipped off the ladder and his arm was cut off by the ladder, by the train. He spent three years teaching me everything there is to know about a newsstand, as if he'd been waiting around for half a century for someone to talk to. What I write about in my books, that's my wife over there, very patient is a lost world. I learned things nobody needs to know. But those two men, one born in 82 and one born in 1896, affected my whole life and my attitude toward class and work. So. I started writing poetry in 1958. I don't think you can learn to be a writer. I think it's just in you and it wants to get out. The Marlboro Cop. Hot, hot day. Poor man living in a rich man's town. Car stretched out like a highway to hell. Gotta get home. A whip around the mob and sail around the shoulder, running for that last green light. Between me, a couch, and cool, cool air. But shit, there's those damn red and blue lights crawling right up my ass. I see the cop get out in my cracked rearview mirror. No cop hat, tight blue cop shirt, too small. He lifts weights big time and he wants everyone to know it. Open neck collar, sweat pouring down his sunburned face, shirt drenched, mirror shades, tattooed on his muscled forearm. He ain't happy. I'm being pulled over by the Marlboro cop. Shaggy red mustache, big frown, kill your motor, he growls. License registration, he barks. What do you think you're doing, man? He ain't asking. Ashamed, caught, guilty. I say, I did it. I'm so tired, I'm sorry. The Marlboro cop stops the interrogation, stares at me. I'm driving rust on wheels held together by prayers on a Friday night, surrounded by power in Jaguars, Mercedes, Volvos, AC broken, windows open, breathing their exhaust. You did it? He asked, softer. Yeah, you got me, officer. Another stare from the Marlboro cop. Fifteen years, he snaps. 
15 years ago, the first son of a bitch to say, I did it. God damn it. He shakes his head, hot sweat flying on my confessional face. Cop shoves his ticket book in his back pocket. A fucking honest man. He snarls in disbelief. He wipes his muscled, tattooed forearm across his damp forehead, wet hair sticking to his skin. No ticket for the honest man, the Marlboro cop says to me. Beat it. I stare, stunned, into my dirty, broken mirror, confused as the tough cop walked away, the cracked glass slicing him into both good and evil. Mercy from the merciless? I was waiting for the silver bullet, but, well, what the hell, I didn't want to press my luck. Steel belt of liberation. Rays dancing on my soldered lids, my fragile spine a Gordian knot. Takes an hour of contortions to, get, to give my body back to me. To beat unstoppable time, that posse that pursues me through the night into the dawn. God, give me one more day. Falling out of bed, I escape the darkness, and for one more day, that choice is mine. Awake and naked, I see water on my face. I wince into the mirror. Who the hell is that? <laughs> Waiting for me like a patient hound. Worn jeans hang lifeless on a peg on a wall, awaiting my touch. I slide into them, shape matching shape, the uniform of the unregimented. Outside, drenched in dew, my ancient van awaits me, older than all my grandchildren put together. It dozes, silent in repose. The dull key in my hand unlocks more than a door. It unleashes that spark that unites us, melds us. The big motor rumbles, grumbles. I click on the radio, the wide dial like beckoning beauty stretched out in a line. Choose me, choose me, they cry, temptresses of sound. I choose my poison, rhythm and blues, electrifying the air. My morning brew nests in a holder on the floor, close to my hand, steaming. Evil black coffee, unpremeditated sugar, conspiring together to put my pulse in gear and my heart in the fast lane. Horses under the hood? Oh man, not merely horses. Painted Apaches riding bareback into battle. Spanish Mustangs racing for the open plain, untethered and free. Mounted knights in black steel, thundering toward each other, lances aimed at each other's hearts. Oh, Jesus, I am all that, when my motor roars to life and then I go. Fifties rockers synthesizing my overdrafts, defiant songs of dead singers overtaking my obligations, disappearing in my rearview mirror, their treble and opiate chasing shadows from my mind. The booming bass coursing through my body, reminding me of other pleasures. My nimble fingers conduct the orchestra of the wind, rampaging past my ride. An engine that ignites, a transmission that engages, four steel belted tires and a full tank of gas. I am man joined with machine, invincible, and so much more than the sum of our rusty parts. We mesh, we moved, we are synchronized. Hey, moron, blocking my open road. Get the hell out of my way. So happy, so complete. I am going nowhere, making excellent time. <laughs> Two more and I'm done. And thank you all for waiting so long. This rhymes and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I seek the praise of ordinary men whose lives I reveal and then capture by pen. Men who slaughter cows, who farm and cut trees. Men who suffer pain in their backs and their knees. Carpenters, cops, women who teach, people who protest and march in the streets. Slaves to computers, men who pour steel, sentenced to their lives and there is no appeal. Oil-stained mechanics with grease in their hands. Printers and plumbers, now where are their fans? 
smoke-eating firemen, God-fearing people, rabbis and mosques, a temple, a steeple. Citizens who vote for promise-making men, though they've been lied to again and again, men who plant trees, electricians and nurses, wistful mothers in stores with no cash in their purses, cowboys, truck drivers, railroad ticket punchers, artists and writers, quiet souls who crunch numbers. I write stories of hope, screams of outrages, real people, real lives who come alive on my pages, stories about anger, people cruel or wise, not just about my life, because I hear the cries of the children whose fathers were sent off to war, who can't comprehend what they're fighting for. I hear you, I see you, I feel your frustration with our country derailed, with our misguided nation. Every person matters, though poor with no power. A man's not more precious because his name's on a tower. I write about hope, revenge, and satisfaction. I urge you to resist, to become men of action. So I write with a passion, again and again, because I want to get it right for all you ordinary men. Amen. And this is the last. Allow me my foolish mortality, my assumption of being more than meets the eye, the illusion of my value enduring beyond a moment, the weight of an observation, a measured interpretation of another's expression, calculating the risks of my children's relationships. Who weighs the value of such judgments? What makes one's past words more than faint rustling of dead leaves? Are my pronouncements a telegraph clicking only on my end of the line? Why do I seek God's confidence of reception? More than a pebble, less than a comet, like all of us ultimately ending as a grain of sand on a shore, shorn of singularity and distinction. As time passes and contemporaries fade, Increasingly, I am a file, a complaint, an unread letter to the editor. I pray thee, allow me my foolish mortality, that my wisdom endures, my memory be treasured, that my words linger in the air, unchallenged by the wind. I will seek contentment with now, with the comfort I can deliver, with appreciation of transient beauty, and for a moment, in time, perhaps I mattered. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. That was great. Uh, we're nearing the end. Uh, we just have one.